Hi, I'm Logan. In this video we'll look at whether it's worth starting stock photography in the year 2020. I get slightly annoyed when people lure you into their videos and then just ramble on for 5 minutes before giving you the information you came for, so I'm just going to answer this question straight away. Is it worth starting stock photography in the year 2020? Yeah, definitely. Straight to the point. BAM! You can thank me by hitting the subscribe button and I will elaborate a little bit. So, I've been submitting my images to stock agencies for seven years. I've been submitting videos for two years. I currently have over 13,000 images online and I just hit 2,000 video clips. So that's a fairly big portfolio, big portfolio content and it's providing me with, with enough residual income to pay my bills and live comfortably. It has been, like my portfolio has been supporting me since probably like the second year of, of doing stuff photography. Anyway, it's my only source of income as a photographer. Uh, it's my only job. I don't do commissions. I don't work with clients. Shooting, shooting stock footage, stock clips, stock photography, and that's the only thing I do. Submitting your content to stock agencies is definitely a, a case of the more you put in, the more you get out. I realized that early on and I just kept shooting and submitting every day. For the first few months I was probably averaging around a dollar a month in sales and uh, this was submitting to four or five five agencies I, I submitted to all the big agencies at times so that would be Shutterstock, iStock, uh, Fotolia, now Adobe uh, and all the some all like the small agencies as well one to three RF can stock deposit photos uh, so yeah, at least five, five or six agencies I was submitting to when I first started out, and I was earning a dollar a month, roughly. That was that would be a good month. Sometimes I'd earn like twenty cents. So it was once I had a portfolio of about a thousand images online that I, that hit a bit of a, a tipping point, and my sales suddenly jumped. Like basically just jumped from practically nothing to to a couple of hundred of dollars a month. And this was good enough for me. I didn't start out doing this thinking it would be my, my career or a full-time job. I just thought it would be a fun way to earn a little bit of extra cash. I, I know a lot of you, like watching this video, who are thinking about maybe starting stock photography. You've, you've got the same same attitude, same mentality. You're just thinking, oh, stock photography. I can earn a little bit of extra money doing that. I'll just go and take some photos over the weekend. I'll sell a few. And maybe I'll have enough money in a year to buy some more camera equipment, a new lens or something. I'm not a trained photographer. If, if that's what you want to call it. I didn't study photography at some some place of higher learning. I don't have a degree in photography or, or anything for that matter. Um, I hardly have any formal education. I didn't do any internships with professional photographers. I didn't like spend years making coffee for someone in the studio. I've just always had a keen interest in photography. So 2020. Ever since I first achieved success doing this, I've had people ask me the same thing things over and over again. Do you think I could do this? Is this a good year to start stock photography? Is it too late to start in 2015, 2016, 2017? And I always told them the exactly same thing. No, it's not too late. The best time to start is now. And by the way, that doesn't just apply to stock photography. It doesn't matter what you want to start. If you want to start something, the best time is always now. I'll admit that I probably owe a lot of my success to timing. When most people think of stock photography, they think of cheesy over-the-top images that just look a little bit, um, you know the kind of images that just look fake. Fake staged. People are just like smiling too much when they, they shouldn't be smiling. Like they're in situations that wouldn't really call for smiling, but they're smiling and laughing anyway. Oh look, I'm opening a door. Oh look, I've got something in my hand. Oh look, I fell off my bike and broke my knee. Fake. So before doing this, my background in photography was street photography and I only ever shot in film as well. In fact, I only just bought my first digital camera the year before I started doing stock photography. So this was back in 2012, which was like years after like most people started doing like digital photography or switched from film to, to digital. I was a bit of a purist that way. I thought, mm, I'm not, not going to switch to digital, film is like the only way to take proper photos and blah blah blah. But yeah, anyway, so street photography. 
My interest was in just capturing daily life and situations, events, real people. My friends used to hate me because I would always like have a camera with me and, and you know, like point it at them when they were like doing things they perhaps didn't want to remember or or didn't want their their mum to see. So in twenty thirteen, when I started stock photography, couldn't tell you why, don't know what brought this on, but there was a bit of a shift in the market. Advertisers, designers, image buyers were kind of moving away from the traditional stock photo look that I mentioned earlier. This one. And towards more authentic images. And having been a street photographer, my images just seemed to, to fit into that uh, need for authentic imagery really quite perfectly. So yeah, you could say I got lucky, you could say I got my timing right, but that's the thing, you can do that too. The world is constantly changing, we all know that. Therefore the need for images to reflect this changing world is constantly changing too. Take travel photography for an, for an example, that's a great example. Popular locations are always changing, tourist guides and the like will, will always want the most recent and accurate photos of a location. New technology is always emerging, people need photos of that, they need photos of people using this technology, and they need photos of people using this technology in different locations. I have photos that took six years ago that are still very popular, photos that still bring me lots of sales. I also have shots that did really well when I first uploaded them, and now they're just sitting in this big, super, really super big, massive digital dustbin. The only thing that really matters if you want success in stock photography is finding a niche. For me, that was authentic imagery of people. For you, well, you have to figure that out yourself. I would recommend starting with something you're interested in, something you're passionate about. Why? Well, if you're passionate about something, it's going to show in your photography. And if you're taking pictures of something you're passionate about, chances are you're familiar with that subject as well. So you know how to photograph it. You know how to represent it accurately. And you can do it better than someone who, who doesn't know anything about that subject. Maybe it's a sport, maybe it's a new technology, maybe it's a profession. There's nothing more cringe-worthy than stage stock photos of actors being instructed to do something that neither they or the photography knows nothing about. Be real. Like, if you only take one thing away from this, that's, that's the lesson of today. Be real. One thing I often hear as an excuse for not starting stock photography is that the market is saturated. Which is... true to some extent? Depends on how you look at it. Many stock agencies seem to want to play a numbers game and they're proudly displaying on the front page how many thousand images are added to the, the catalogue every day or hour or second or whatever. Which, personally, I find, that, I find that a little bit ridiculous. But anyway, they do that. And... Well, the truth is, the majority of those images are not very good. Or they don't fit into a niche or stand out within their niche. If you can find a niche that you're really passionate about, and you totally own it, you'll do alright. Like me, you'll probably earn pennies in the beginning, but if you believe in yourself, and keep going, keep at it, keep uploading, keep shooting, the success will come. And speaking of the market being saturated, like I just said, yeah, I think it is. But I think there'll be a backlash, there'll be a correction, so to speak. I know some designers, I know a few designers, so these are these people are essentially my customers. These are people who buy buy stock images. And they are frustrated, they're not happy. They tell me how they will go to the stock site looking for something quite specific. Uh, it should be possible to find something specific when you've got like 40 million images to choose from. But they spend hours, they often spend hours trawling through images that are completely useless to them before finally either finding what they uh, came to find, something that would be suitable for their project, or just giving up altogether and going out and, and taking, the, taking the shot on their, their phone by themselves. This is because some contributors upload the same image 10 times. Well, not the exact same image, but like one like the subject shot from like 10 slightly different angles with like maybe you've got like a shot straight on and then it's like slightly to the side, slightly to the side, slightly to the side. Some contributors as well keyword spam, meaning that they add tons of keywords that are completely irrelevant, they do not relate to the content of the image, at least not if you look at it like purely objectively, which you should be doing when you're keywording an image. And the problem in here is that agencies allow this. 
they allow this to happen because they want to increase the size of their library. They want to be able to say, oh, we've got X amount of images added today. But I think that soon we'll see major agencies start starting to clean up their collections because they know that this is not what customers want. They know that they've got too much shit on their sites. They want to get rid of it and they want to like be more focused on, on all of the good stuff. We see new agencies popping up all the time as well. I think there will definitely be an emergence of more kind of niche agencies. Uh, we're seeing a lot of like smaller boutique-y kind of stock agencies. And this is especially true about stock footage. I haven't really said much about that yet. Um, whether to do stock footage or just stills or both. That's really, that's, that's not a really big topic beyond the scope of this discussion. If you'd like me to do a video about that, uh, stock footage versus stills, let me know in the comments. Right now I'll just say that if you're just starting out in 2020, trying to create income from submitting uh, content to agencies, to stock agencies, getting started in video is a lot more expensive. First of all, you need a 4K camera to future-proof your portfolio. You can shoot in, in HD, you can submit in HD. You can use your phone to submit video if you want. But to be sure that you, you'll still be selling your, your footage years from now, you, you really do need a proper 4K camera, a hybrid camera or DSLR, which will be expensive. And video files are huge, so you're going to need to be spending more money on hard drive space as well. But the stock footage market is still young, and demand is increasing rapidly, so if you can afford the cost of entry, I would definitely recommend that you focus your efforts on video. Video clips also command a higher price tag, so you don't need as big a portfolio before you start seeing a, seeing a good return on that. Of course, that's all the other things considered as well. You're shooting stuff within your niche, you're producing quality content, and you're keywording your, your footage, your content appropriately, so it's actually being found. So just a few more points why 2020 is a good time to start stock photography. So this is a little bit contradictory to what I just said, but you don't need expensive gear to get started in stock photography. One benefit of starting stock photography in 2020 as opposed to a few years ago, like 20 years ago when selling photos online first started becoming a thing, is that technology has improved dramatically. You can get some amazing cameras now at a, at a fraction of a cost that they were years ago. That's especially true when it comes to video. 4K is affordable to most people who are interested in doing this now. It's easier to be accepted by the stock agencies now as well. Um, that might be a good thing, that might be a bad thing. When I first signed up, some agencies actually made you take an exam before judging your work and allowing you to submit. At least they should just sign up and you're on your way. Demand for content is increasing. More and more people do work online, start businesses, produce online content, blogs, YouTube videos. They all need quality photos and videos. Prices are coming down as well, so stock content is affordable to more people. Again, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I'll tell you this though, looking at your earnings report and seeing that you pay $2 for a 4K video clip, that can be a bit depressing. You don't really feel, feel valued, but I guess it really depends on how you look at it. You might earn less on a sale now than you would five years ago, but if your content is affordable to more people and the demand is greater, maybe it doesn't really matter. Maybe it doesn't make a difference. Now, throughout my career in stock photography, I've seen dips in my earnings, but I think it's always been because of something I did, not some external factor. Not uploading frequently enough is, is the biggest enemy to your earnings, I think which is something I'm guilty of. I've done that loads of times and I've seen my earnings like take a massive dive whenever I didn't upload. Another thing I just want to say about the market being saturated is that algorithms are constantly getting better. The algorithm that stock agencies are using to like, help buyers find what they're looking for, they're constantly improving, they're constantly reprogramming them, feeding loads of data into them and having them analyze it uh, to make them better. So that means if you're doing everything else right, if you're shooting quality content within your niche, if you're keywording properly, then your images will be found. It doesn't matter if another 50,000 images were uploaded on that day. If someone's looking for your exact photo, your exact style, the algorithm will match that buyer with your content. You will be found. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, be sure to like it. If you didn't like it, go ahead and hit the dislike button. But please tell me why because I'm brand new to this and I just want to give you the best videos I can so any feedback is appreciated. Coming up, a little short film I shot with stock footage. Well, a little stock footage film. I shot some stock footage and put it together. 
into a little short film while testing out my new gimbal. Check it out.